Now we'll start here. Anglo Israel, I've got uh, as usual our link uh, to my uh, YouTube channel, your YouTube channel, and I've got now I've got a link, direct link to his. And by the way, that's God's Covenant People .com. He bought a dot com domain that goes directly to his YouTube channel. So here's what we have listed here: the 2019 uh, God's Covenant People Annual Homecoming Conference. Okay. And then he'll talk about how you can get on that. And here's the list of speakers. Pastor Dave Barley, Charles Jennings, Dr. Lawrence Blanchard, Ron uh, Poach, Dr. Don Elmore, and Dr. Everett Ramsey. And I have a, his schedule already pulled up. Here's his website, which has just been uh, kind of new and improved. And he has, if you look at his website, uh, like I said, godscovenantpeople.com will take you directly to his website. If you look down to the bottom, it starts with the intro to the 2018 Branson Conference where you had all the same uh, speakers except for Ron. So you can look over what we did last year. And then he also teaches here locally in Missouri uh, in uh, Mountain Home area of Arkansas and so forth. So he goes different places. And then uh, we uh, load his videos up here, which he has a few hits. So these haven't been up long, uh, a month, it says, on a couple of them there. All right. And then uh, here's his website, Everett Ramsey DD. Okay. Dot com. And if you look down here, you can just read some of this and uh, kind of familiarize yourself with uh, Dr. Ramsey. And I'll uh, bring him on here in just a second. All right, Paul. There's Dr. Ramsey. Hello, Paul. Glad to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. Uh, glad uh, I've known David now for a little while, and I certainly appreciate what he does for God's work. And we're glad to be a part of this program tonight. And uh, we'll give a little bit of background about ourselves. Um, I, I hesitate sometimes to... Uh, talk about my website a lot, especially the name of it, EverGramseyDD.com. Actually, I put it together because uh, there were some gentlemen that were printing some ostacious material about me that was not correct, and uh, that was the first thing that came up. So I used my name, and the problem is the domain for my name had already been sold, so I had to add something. I guess I could add one, two, or three, four, or something, but I just put the DD after it. I'm not bragging about education. Uh, that's not necessarily uh, the big thing. I said in my life, uh, I went through college and got a lot of different degrees, but I didn't learn anything until I got out of school. So <laughs> I learned it mostly the hard way. Um, if you go to my website, you will find a story that, that really where the Lord made my ministry. And uh, we had a, a Christian school the state of Nebraska padlocked the church and tried to close down the school, put my elders and myself in jail for several months. But eventually, after six years and six million dollars, we won the, the suit and got freedom for the people in Nebraska. So that, that opened a lot of doors, and uh, that's where I first heard the message about the kingdom message. I don't use the word identity much. I use the word the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, rather than this personalized, uh, international, multiracial uh, salvation. Uh, the Lord never did teach that. He taught us to preach the kingdom of God, uh, the gospel of the kingdom. And uh, <clears throat> from that time on, uh, we've been preaching this message, and God has blessed in a, a mighty large way. Uh, my uh, first wife passed away, and the Lord gave me a wonderful wife, and uh, we're doing a great work. The Lord has opened many, many doors and given us many opportunities to preach his word and to teach. But in spite of all that, I'm still a learner. I don't know it all. I say everybody knows something, nobody knows it all. And that's kind of where I, I fit in the, the time. But we now, as uh, Dave has pointed out, we have a new book. It's actually about the exclusivity of Israel and God's kingdom uh, message and covenant. Uh, they are his people. It's a racial decision. Uh, everybody talks about being racist today. In truth, God probably the ultimate racist, if you want to uh, talk that way about it. Uh, but we have, to, we have to be honest about it. The churches have become so foreign to the gospel 
and so foreign to the truth, most of the people go to church and leave with nothing. Uh, so it's become a disaster. And I'm very happy to hear that uh, you and Dave and others are working on this uh, uh, find in uh, Saudi Arabia about the uh, crossing. I've known that for some lo long time, but I think it needs to have a message with it. You know, when Jesus came to this earth, he, could, he didn't have much uh, power in the local churches, in the synagogues. He wasn't loved very much. They didn't want to hear the truth. Dr. Truth, I keep saying, uh, the Bible says truth has fallen to the ground, and boy, we have been that here in this country for a long time. And uh, Jesus worked on the outside. He, he just went to the people, and that's what we've got to do. We've got to go to the people. We've got to bypass uh, the pastors in a lot of cases because most of them are not willing to learn. They're not willing to listen, not willing to open up. This book just came out. God made a racial choice. There's 20 uh, chapters in there, and there, every one of them are important for people to read. I came out uh, two years ago with a new book on the parables. And so those are the two newest books I've written. I have several others, but those are the new ones and uh, deal with the message of which we had at hand. Sorry. Pastor Ramsey, um, I don't know if this is a good place to ask a question, but in your book, sure. do you address, you know, define what race is? Because I know a lot of people, uh, you know, that means different things to different people. Uh, I don't know that I define the, the, the uh, thing of race. Uh, I don't think I have a place in there where I just give a definition for race. I, I, I certainly say that the Bible is a racial book and deals with racial issues and uh, it doesn't deal with the non-Adamic race in any general way or any specific way. And so we don't really have anything to work with there. All we know is that God, uh, before the foundation of the world, he chose a race and he created that race. And he, he created them for a specific purpose and his purpose will be accomplished whether the enemy uh, doesn't want it to be or not, not. Right, and and I, I, you know, I understand that Adam to show red in the face. So one of our outward indicators would be, you know, Caucasian. You know, the the Caucasian through the Caucasus Mountains. I'm sure right. you know all this. And and uh, but you know, just about everybody you meet thinks they're a child of God, even most white people, but they nece not necessarily all are. But I, I think I understand, of course, what you're saying in God's covenant people. There is a covenant through the bloodline of Adam, uh, all the way through Jacob and the 12 tribes. And, and however God's going to relocate all of those, it's not for us to really judge because we really don't know. Only God knows which, uh, right. which vessel is suitable to be a covenant person. Right. Well, I agree with that. Um, and I... I believe that uh, the Lord has made it plain that in one place he, he said, uh, whoever the Father gives me, uh, I, all the Father gives me, I will save. And so there's a, this element that God is going to be the creator, he's the caller, he's the redeemer, he's the savior, he's, he does all of it. And uh, this idea that we somehow have something to do with it other than to be obedient, I don't know uh, where that came from, uh, other than the Armenian uh, and many enemies have put out many gospels. But uh, the, the fact that we go all over the world and we try to offer this wonderful covenant relationship to people to whom it is never intended has to be one of the cruelest things we could possibly do, in my mind. And uh, uh, I have to deal with people on a regular basis who come to me and say, well, you know, I, I mean, I just... Uh, had a fellow not not too long ago who's, a, who's probably an Israelite, uh, but he um, he created a union with a non-Israelite, and uh, they wanted to come to the conference. And I said, well, you know, I don't hate you, and I don't have anything uh, against you, other than the fact that you have violated all of the rules that apply to covenant people, and this meeting is for covenant people, so I don't know how you would fit in, and we turned down his registration, but. Uh, some people would see that as being cruel. Well, I think it would be more cruel to hold out the promise that he's going to have a covenant relationship in eternity when that's probably not going to be the case. 
Yeah, I understand, and, and I'm familiar with that issue. Some would argue from the New Testament that the, in the book of Romans it says there are there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And uh, so, you know, there's I've heard I've heard others try to justify their position in that in that regard. Uh, yeah, the, the, one of the things in the new book that I've covered is that every single book in the New Testament is clearly identified as being written to the 12 tribes of Israel. So it's pretty hard to take anything out of that and apply it to people who don't fit that description. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> my objective, I, I'm, I'll be 80 years old in a couple of months. I'm very healthy and I feel good, but that doesn't mean I'm going to live past tonight. But as long as the Lord gives me good health and I live, my objective is to go out and to bring God's people to the realization that they have a covenant obligation. That's our biggest problem, is uh, everybody wants to be his people, but nobody wants to take on the obligations of, of obeying his law and learning his law and, and living and establishing his law, as they did in this country when it was founded. Uh, with the enemy... The end, preaching the enemy, uh, certainly we need to have some wisdom about the enemies, but that's not our message. Our message is not to go out and, and curse the Jews or to curse anybody else. Uh, Jesus Christ certainly warned us about them and told us many things about them, called them vipers and said they couldn't have a covenant relationship. Uh, but for us to make that our message, uh, it ruins every bit of our opportunity, I think. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And uh, I think the same thing can be said about race. Uh, I don't know what God's uh, plan for the other races. But one thing for sure, I, I, our God is not going to send them all to hell. I don't, I, I don't see that happening. And uh, when God talked about us and compared us to others, the most he could say about us was that uh, we are hard-headed, stiff-necked, and rebellious. And the other people, I remember reading in two or three places where he said about the other people, they were more faithful to their false gods than we are to the true God. So yeah. uh, it looks like we're the ones that are heavily condemned more than they are. Yeah, you see that all the time. I mean, if, if most of the Christians would give half the dedication to Jesus that the Muslims give to their God, we, we'd have a revival. Oh, yeah. amen to that. I agree. And, uh, you know, it's it just... The, the other people go so avidly about, and our people uh, just give up for no reason at all. I mean, the enemy can say boo, and they're gone. That's the end. There, there's no courage left. We read about the early church and how people uh, stood for the Lord. They, they didn't do it uh, defyingly. They didn't do it with a forty-five in their hand or an automatic weapon. They didn't do it with uh, hostility. They simply said, I've got to obey my king. And they obeyed their king, and if that caused them pain and death, they took it. Our people are unwilling to pay that price. Uh, there are some of us who have spent some time in jail, but it's really not that, uh, you can't really say it's suffering. And, and You know, people would love to come to our jails and live here than to live in their own country sometimes. So. But uh, we are getting ready to have a conference. One of the things that has been our great concern is how do we reach out to God's covenant people and reach them uh, with the truth? And how do we get them to know uh, who they are and what their responsibilities are? And uh, Dr. Uh, Lawrence Blanchard, who by the way is a doctor as well as uh, a minister, um, he and his wife, uh, their background was missionary work in the, in the Philippines till they came to this message. And uh, he has been working now for almost uh, seven or eight years on what he calls the uh, Bible Boot Camp uh, program. And basically what it is, he starts with Abraham, and uh, he has three DVDs which will be played in the home where people will bring neighbors and maybe offer them a, a cup of coffee or something. And uh, the whole program takes them word for word through the Bible, filling out a uh, little work bit of books, and by the time they get through about the third or fourth lesson or uh, stage, they're going to realize who they are. Uh, the, but it's not called an identity study. It's not called a kingdom study. All it is is called a Bible boot camp, that they're going to learn what the Bible's about. 
And so we're, we're, I just got my first uh, application of that in the mail today. We're going to study it. It looks very good. I've seen a part of it before. And our conference this year, that's going to be available to anyone who wants to take it back to their home and start a Bible study in their home. They'll have this material to go do it. And uh, I, I think it has lots of opportunity uh, to start little Bible studies around uh, everywhere. And people of God that really want to know what the Bible says, uh, I think we're going to see a lot of conversion, a lot of, uh, a lot of change, and a lot of growth. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. I really encourage everybody to uh, look that up and, uh, and participate if they can. Are you going to have that uh, streaming live, or how would people that can't make the trip uh, find out about it? Yes. Dr. Blanchard uh, has his own website that he will eventually put it on. Uh, it will, his is uh, Our Heritage, I believe, uh, is his uh, website. But he, uh, he will put that on there, and people will be able to get to it and to study it if they can't come to the conference. If people want to come to the conference, they need to give us a call so that we can register them. We, uh, we're not really screening people, but there are people that we would prefer didn't come. Uh, our number, if they want to call us, is 417-967-2011. And we'll have that up. I think we have that up on the website uh, where they can go to the uh, conference page and get that information. Also, they can contact us off at the bottom of the page in our website. Every page has a, a place where they can contact us. And if they will do that, we will automatically send them information about the, the, the conference and help them get registered. Very good. So, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I grew up, I was born actually to a Baptist preacher uh, who was Irish and his wife was Dutch, and uh, they were out of Arkansas. Uh, some people think that's a foreign country, it probably is. <laughs> but uh, uh, I grew up in that uh, background. At age five, four, my mother uh, died of cancer, and my father was rather old, and uh, so uh, we got it, my brother and I got adopted into Missouri by an aunt, a sister of my mother. Uh, the problem is, and that's a part of my story that uh, I share sometimes with people, uh, the man she married was a Canaanite Jew, and she didn't know it. Uh, God knew it. She, she admitted she, she married outside of the will of God. Uh, it was not an easy life. I got to see from the inside a man who is a uh, Canaanite and how they live, how they think. He hated God. He was a very close friend with uh, the Rockefellers. Uh, he was a lawyer. Uh, he, uh, he hated Christians. He used to stand in the driveway and curse us all as we went to church on Sunday. Um, and uh, he wrote uh, Rockefeller and said, uh, uh, we'll never have one world government till we get rid of the Christians. Well, that's right, but he's not gonna get rid of us. <laughs> God's not gonna let him do that. And uh, so after I grew up, um, got a little bit older, I left and went to college, and uh, I studied to be an engineer and business, and I worked at that for a while until I felt God called me to the ministry, and uh, then I went to Bible college. And, you know, Bible colleges and seminaries teach you basically their agenda. That's what they teach. And uh, if you go to a Lutheran seminary, you're going to have one agenda. If you go to a Catholic seminary, you'll have a different one. And if you go to a Baptist, you'll have a different one. And that's the way it is. Uh, I really didn't know the Bible until I got put in jail. And I had lots of time to read. I read the Bible through three times while I was in there. Read a lot of books on the history of America and how it was settled and how we were uh, a Christian nation at one time. And uh, I wrote several books on that experience and some of those things. But if people... Uh, contact us. We'll be glad to send them. I don't sell anything. I have things that are selling on uh, Amazon. I do not get any money out of that. That's, uh, that's uh, a, a, a book uh, that uh, the publisher gets the money. Uh, and if you want to get it from me, you can get it for $5.50. I can get it for five fifty, and you can get it for that, what it cost me. Or if, you're, if you just want to send a donation, even if it's only $2, I'll send it to you. 
So I don't really sell anything. I've got about eight or nine books that I've written. I've given them all away. I've given thousands of them away and still do to this day. And God's been good to us. God's supplied our needs. God's answered our prayers. And God's given us the tools with which to work. So I have no complaints. I just praise the Lord. Yeah, indeed. Pra praise Jesus Christ, our King. And uh, this book looks really interesting. Do you sell it also? Or you not? You don't sell it, but I guess, do you have a, a digital version? Or is it, how would you send people uh, books? I just mail them. Uh, I just box them up and mail them. If you want the digital form, uh, the only digital form that it will have is Kindle. Uh, my other book on there is uh, The Kingdom Parables. Uh, I recommend it uh, for people to read it. Uh, it'll be a new application of how they see the parables if you if you go to a regular church. And it's in a Kindle form already, and you can go on there and, and get it get the get it uh, and it's uh i think it's like four dollars or something and that's what this one will be it'll be around five dollars in the kindle version but uh that all goes to amazon they make all the money <laughs> but uh, again i'm i i'm willing to, to mail out these books i don't have this book in hand yet but i will have very soon i have the uh, parable book i have a commentary on romans I have uh, a book on the fir America's first padlock church. That was our church. I have uh, from uh, sovereignty to slavery is a, a, a book on uh, the government and how we lost our freedom. I have one. I have one that's called Dear Legislator, uh, which is a presentation we made to the Nebraska uh, legislature to try to get the laws changed before everything came to a head. And it's a Bible study on why people ought to train their own children and get them out of the public schools and get them away from the, the uh, uh, atheistic, humanistic, uh, uh, satanic teaching. You know, it's, uh, I'm sorry, they may have Christian teachers there, but they're not allowed to, create, to teach Christian stuff, that's for sure. So I'm willing to send all of these books. I usually just box up a whole box and send them. If somebody sends me a request for a book, I usually just send everything. And I'm glad to do it. As long as I can afford to do it, I'll do it. Well, that's quite quite generous, and uh, certainly uh, God is working through you in, in many ways. Uh, back to the covenant people, of course, uh, Jacob, Israel, and then uh, a person asked me today about who was it that married into Egypt? Was it uh, was it Moses? No, he married into uh, uh, Midianite, but somebody married into into Egypt. But what what weren't the? Oh, I know what it was at the time of the Exodus. And uh, were the Egyptians at that time Caucasian, or had they already gotten mixed? Well, I think it was a. I think it was both. I think there were white uh, Egyptians and mixed. But one of the things you need to remember and tell, I tell, I get asked that question, and I tell people, who was it that really got condemned and called the mixed multitude? The Bible many times said the mixed multitude. They caused the problem. They griped and complained. They couldn't get enough food. They couldn't get enough water. They were always against Moses. They were against God. They were against everything. They were the mixed multitude uh, because the, the Israelites were not the only ones in slavery. And uh, the other people wanted out. And when they heard Israel was going to leave, they went over and joined them. <laughs> problem was they were a, a noose around their neck. They, they should have never taken them, but they did. But, but I think it was a mixed bag. Mixed bag. Okay, great. Uh, of course, people want to say, you know, Ruth was uh, was a Moabite. Well, she wasn't a Moabite. Uh, she was she was an Israelite. Well, people say, well, you know, that famous saying. She says, "I'll go with you, and I'll, uh, uh, your, uh, I'll go where you go, and I'll live where you live, and your people will be my people." The problem is in the original Hebrews, the word, the verbs were not there. She said, "Your people, my people." She was saying, "Your people are my people." That's so why I'm going with you. <laughs> wasn't gonna wasn't gonna become my people. So she was an Israelite. Same thing with uh, 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 Moses when he uh, married uh, a woman from Cush. Uh, everybody got all been out of shape. And they say, well, she he married a black woman. Cush was not black. Cush was white, just like uh, the others were. Some of them mixed. Some of them went in and mixed and married into other races. But originally Noah and his uh, family was saved because their genetics were pure, their generations were pure. They would not have been uh, redeemed through the flood. So Cush was not a black man, and got, he didn't turn black 
after the flood, and neither did Canaan. Uh, that's one of the problems today, is many of the cursed people that are our enemies today are white. They look white. And it's hard for our people to, to desegregate that. Uh, <clears throat> but that's why I asked you that question earlier, because yeah. you cannot always go by the cover of the book. It may all look white. And I'm glad you brought up Ruth, because I get that question on Ruth often. And the other person that I just remembered is Joseph, because he you know, became the ruler of Egypt. And someone said, well, he married into the other races. If I recall, didn't he marry what they called the priest of On or daughter or yeah, something like that? And they were white. They were, they were Adamic people. They were not. Uh, and that's why... Uh, that's why uh, Jacob, when he got ready to die, he told Joseph, bring your sons. Uh, and he said, I'm going to adopt them and put my name on them. We don't, we don't understand uh, well enough when it says to put our name or, or become a name. Uh, he put Israel upon them, their name upon them. Just like uh, in the uh, uh, Acts where uh, they had the discussion about the, the uh, Gentile dispersed Israelites coming into the faith and uh, uh, they said that it's true the Lord said that he would uh, raise up the tabernacle of David and he's going out among his people. He said going out among his people to put, find a people to put his name on them. Well, uh, just like five years ago when I married this woman, I put my name on her uh, and that's what these are. In this, in this so, so what name? Did, what what name did God put on His people? That, I get asked that all the time. Put He put uh, He's going to put sons and daughters and a covenant relationship, which they they will become a bride. Right, they, but He said, "I they shall be called by My name." What What are we called by today? I I believe it's Christians. Myself, Christians, yes. Then that's Christ's name. Yes, you're correct about that, uh, and. But a lot of people, and I may, not many people may agree with me on this, and that's fine. I always tell people, I'm not going to fight over anything. You have a right to disagree with me. Uh, but <clears throat> I believe that in this age, not every Israelite is going to be brought to faith, repentance, and obedience. He is picking out a bride that is going to sit on the throne, who's going to rule with him, and be his Israel rulership. It's called the Tabernacle of David, which included the kingship, the temple. We're going to be the keys, the king priests. But at a later time, there will be, I believe, a regathering, and there will be a time when other Israelites will come to faith. They will come to repentance. They will come to obedience, but they're not going to be in the select group. They're not going to be in the management group. They're going to have another part in the kingdom. I don't know what that will be. That will be. Right, the many that's crowns right. are different job functions, assignments. Uh. So that's why when I have a man right now that lives in the Chicago area and he's very concerned about his uh, his family, he says uh, they don't get serious, they don't seem to take this serious. I'm very serious about it, but they're not. And, and of course, he grew up in a traditional church that said they're all going to die and go to hell. And uh, I said, I, I gave him this explanation. I said, you know, the Lord said, all Israel will be saved. Now, I understand there's two, two interpretations to that. One is that means all 12 tribes will be saved. Some people believe that. But I believe it's even more than that because in one place it says in Adam all died, but in Christ all live. So if all means all, then, then at some point they're going to come out of the grave. And, uh, and, uh, so can you, define, can you define beyond the 12 tribes what you're including as Israel? Because I kind of align with this myself. Well, I believe, that, I believe that Adamites were given a spiritual capacity for God. When it says he breathed into them, that was not just error. He breathed the spirit into them. So I believe potentially all of the, the pure Adamites that are left have that potential to have belief and faith. But they can, none of us can have it unless God gives it to us. He's going to have to give us that faith and that that uh, conviction and that repentance and that obedient heart and that love. None of us seek God. None of us love God. None of us, no matter if we're Israelites, we don't naturally go out and seek God. He has to bring that to us through his Holy Spirit. And I believe that he's doing that uh, decisively during this age. And there will be another time when he will do it for the rest. 
But I believe that that you cannot say that Israel, uh, no no other white people in the world uh, can be uh, can have any other part of the kingdom. I think they can. I think they can be brought to faith. That's the key. And people ask me, well, how do you know who's a, who is an Israelite and who is not? And I said, uh, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they hear me and they follow me. That's the key. If they're willing to follow God and obey God and seek God and serve God, as far as I'm concerned, they're an Israelite. Well, let me ask you this, because I have some friends that are uh, not, you know, they're not white skinned people. And they have a passion somewhat more than a lot of white Christians I know for, for Bible study. Where do they fit in? Well, I believe that I believe that they are anybody. I believe anybody in the world who obeys the Bible can be blessed. I believe that tithing will, will bless a black man just as much as it will bless a white man. I believe that living without adultery will bless uh, an Indian guy just as much as a white man. But they can be religious and they can choose to serve God. But I would be I would be very negligent in my responsibilities if I said that they have the ability to have a covenant relationship with them. I don't believe they can have that. Right, not covenant for sure. Not covenant. I, I just yeah. uh, I, I just wonder because there is some some beliefs. In fact, I teach this that that uh, the a lot of we are the Elohim. We are the uh, covenant bloodline of Jacob, but the others that Christian identity generally just doesn't address too much. Uh, there's some strong evidence that the, the fallen angels I call that have parole opportunity uh, were also sent here. And, you know, the scripture says, know ye not that ye shall judge the angels. I believe the angels are all around us and they oh, don't have the covenant. But I think if they make parole, this is me only, Professor Truth. I don't speak for Dr. Okay. Ramsey, um, that if they make parole, that, that they can be redeemed to whatever state and condition they were wherever they came from. Well, I, I understand, I, and I, you know, obviously I don't know. Uh, we're all learning. I'm learning. Uh, I just, I just at this point, I'm not, I tell people I have some black friends, and I have some Hispanic friends, and I tell them, one thing for sure, you can't go wrong believing in God, trusting God, loving God, and reading the Bible, and obeying God. You can't go wrong with that. I said, I can't promise you everything I think we're going to get, but I think you're going to get something. And I just have to leave that up to God. God. No, I, I'm, I'm totally with you. And, and of course, uh, we, we, Jesus Christ is a merciful God, and he'll have mercy yes. upon whom he will have mercy. It's not like some people who believe that when, when the Lord comes and establishes his rule on this earth, that everybody else is going to be blown away. I don't, I don't believe that. I believe the nations that exist that have been... Uh, a blessing to the Hebrews uh, and the Israelites uh, may go on, but they're going to be born, they're going to live, they're going to die. They're, but I don't, I don't see heaven or hell as as, a, as an option there. I just see it as life going on, as to be a part. As long as they're willing to be under the rule of Christ, I think they'll be allowed to be here. You know, I believe that angels ha were were created with eternal spirits. They weren't born yes. from below. They were born from above. Right. They're not, they're not our species, but they are angels. <laughs> and what it, what, some of those were just doing their job when the rebellion broke out. And I believe Father's going to have mercy on them, whatever that means. That, uh, that's an area I've not really studied. So, you know, it kind of piqued my interest a little. Maybe I'll go do some. Well, there's actually a, a website, and I don't have anything to do with it. It's called angelfall.com, and they took the scriptures in the original Hebrew and Greek and turned them into mathematics, and I won't take up all of your show with this, but they, they oh, show that, that the probabilities of these associated codes and number uh, uh, additions align to mean certain things, and it, it's very fascinating. So over to you, Dr. Ramsey. That's all right. I, I, I'm, I'm here to learn just as much as to try to teach, so... Uh, I'm, I'm open to that. Well, I do believe that there are angels, but I believe also that the angels before the flood <clears throat> that uh, uh, created some unusual beings there, uh, I think that we're seeing some of that uh, pour out in the earth today. I think we're seeing uh, some of those uh, spirits that are coming out of the ocean in different places that 
that they're having an influence. In fact, they may be walking around in Washington, D.C. for all I know, the way they live up there and act. <laughs> you, you are on the mark than you realize. Yeah, well, but I made a, quite a study uh, about the flood and the angels before and the seraphim and, and uh, uh, those spirit beings. And, uh, you know, it's like you said, they, they were created with a body that died and perished, but uh, the spirit part of them didn't die. And uh, right. and I think uh, uh, I think they still exist. I think they've been in chains of darkness, but I think a lot of the uh, nuclear activity that's been going on in the world testing for the last 50 years has had some impact on them and has given them power that they were not supposed to have. Right, and, and if, if you if you living. if it piques your interest, watch a couple shows I did with Lieutenant Colonel S. C who worked in some of the underground bases, it's going to confirm what you're saying. So I'll leave it at that. Oh, good, good. Well, I'll take a look. I'll take a look at it. Uh, I'm, I'm always interested in that. I think... Pray I think, first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pray first. They're pretty strong. I've seen uh, several. Uh, I've, I've had contact. I've traveled extensively in the 80s and 90s, and I met a lot of people around the world that... Uh, it's obvious that when you go to Washington, D.C., you're walking into demon, the demonology, uh, the, the, the city of demons, I call it. it it's, there's, it's unusual. Uh, you, you feel a depression there that you don't feel anywhere else. Well, I uh, ask everybody to pray for us. I pray for us to, number one, is stay on target. And number two is to be honest and, and be filled with the Holy Spirit and to do that which pleases the Lord. We're not interested in building buildings or going in debt. We're not interested in trying to build a big name for ourselves. What I'd like to see more than anything else is for God's covenant people to realize who they are and to rise up and obey God and uh, make it impossible for the enemy to carry on the program they're trying to carry on. Do you think at this point in the timeline that th that that your desire for God's covenant people to to have a, a revival in a sense is is possible or do you think we've gone past a point of no return? Well, uh, I would say that we've gone past the point of no return unless God uh, smiles upon us and gives us a revival. Uh, I think if enough of God's people cry unto him, uh, just like in Judges when they got uh, overwhelmed by the enemy, they would cry out and the Lord would send someone and, and raise up someone and uh, they would be uh, be freed. Uh, obviously, it didn't last. Uh, I think, but I think there's hope for us for this reason. In Judges, the Holy Spirit did not live inside of those people. They, from the garden time until the day of Pentecost, they, there were a time or two, there were cases where the Spirit was in them. Uh, but it was usually an anointing for different things. But today, God's covenant people have the indwelling spirit, whether they know it or not. And we need to get the right word to them so the Holy Spirit can convict them and teach them. That's our job, as I see it. Yeah, abs absolutely. Um, Revelation 3, 5, you know, if he knocks and we open the door, he comes in and sups with us. And we, we, we get off our throne of pride and we bow in humility and Jesus Christ takes over in the Holy Spirit. And, and all we have to do is embrace that, uh, you know, claim it in the name of Jesus. And there would be a lot of positive things that would happen for our, our people. I, I think that if, when people get so hungry for the word and for spiritual things, we can have it. The problem is we're still too hungry for uh, worldly things. Uh, I feel sorry for the younger generation uh, that have not had good parenting. They haven't had good teaching from the scriptures. They haven't had anything. They don't have anything to work with. And their suicide rate is high. Their discouraged and depression rate is high. Uh, they, they, they live in a world they don't know how to fit in. They don't know where they belong. And especially is that true of God's people. I think God's children are just lost in this world. And the preachers and the churches do not give them any hope. And, and I've, I've been to a lot of them, and, and my, we just finally quit going. We, we kept trying to go have some fellowship once in a while, but you just it's just impossible. It's hard. Doesn't doesn't Revelation say come out of her, my people, meaning the uh, mystery Babylon? It, it not only yeah. includes the financial system of the world, but it includes the, the false spirit, the false prophet, if I call the spirit of the false prophet that is in 
indwelt most most churches. I'm not going to say all, but most of them. I, I would agree. I would agree. When you've got churches like even in our little small town, I mean, we're in rural America where the population, our population is 99% white, 1% or less non-white. And yet they've got non-white preachers standing in the pulpits of many of these churches. And, and you're, you're, you're looking at that like, why? Why have we got this? And uh, it, it's a sad situation. It's a sad documentary on the churches. I, I, I just turn it over to God. I've done all I know what to do about the churches. I've tried to communicate with pastors. And, they're, and I understand that. I'm a pastor. It took me three years from the time I heard about this message until I could actually say, I believe this message. I, it took that long for me to unravel all of the theology that I had accepted from the Bible colleges and seminaries that had to be unraveled with truth from the scriptures. And it took me three years to do it. So I understand pastors, uh, if they're 50 years old or getting close to retirement, they don't want to lose their church and they're not interested in wasting their time or they think uh, learning truth. So it's like I say, truth does not hold a high estate in America today. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Well, I, I believe that Lucifer still has dominion until se se the second advent of Jesus. I mean, it's still a legal issue here, uh, dominion and uh, legality. I mean, uh, the churches is, uh, when if they have a steeple on the church, my understanding that represents an obelisk. And yes. and in most cases, I, don't, I can't say all, they have a Freemason as the pastor of those churches under the yeah. obelisk. So, I mean, it... it it's a grand deception, and the 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 simple sheep, the Christians, they're they're hungry for a true shepherd. Which and we've been infiltrated, basically. That's the bottom line. Well, we were infiltrated long ago. They took over our seminaries, our colleges, our churches. They they made sure we all got denominated so that they could control through the denominational headquarters. I mean, uh, I won't tell you what denomination it is, but it's headquartered in Springfield, Missouri. You might be able to figure that out. But that denomination had a uh, had a Jew at the top of it for many years. Yep. I knew him. Yep, I used to and, go uh, to uh, McLean Bible Church out here. You know, six seven thousand people, and their pastor was Lon Solomon, a Jew. <laughs> yes. But I didn't know back then. That was twenty years ago. And uh, you know, I, I I I don't believe I don't believe that the enemy is so strong that they always have to win. I think that we're so wicked, God lets them win. That's the way I feel, feel about it. So I think it's a matter of our people that the, the pulpits have been taken over by people who are antinomian. They don't teach the law anymore. They don't, they don't believe the law exists. That I don't, I don't really know where they come from. Uh, they don't teach, uh, they don't even teach thou shalt not steal and lie and, and uh, adultery and things of that nature anymore. It's just, they just don't teach the law at all. And our people are left hanging with no guidance as to where they need to go. So right now, my next book that I'm working on, and I, my books are all come out of my teaching. This book that I just uh, finished uh, on the exclusivity of Israel called uh, God Made a Racial Choice had 20 uh, chapters. Uh, so it took 20 months for me to get through the teaching of that in, in my churches here. And then I published it. And I, right now I've started a new study on God's commandments, uh, statutes, and judgments. And we're going to go through the whole Bible and we're going to look at his law. And uh, then that will be printed as the Lord willing. Yeah, I, I think I know where they get the antinomian uh, perspective. Uh, I, but I also, one thing they do say, the antinomians, is that Jesus or God wrote his laws on our heart. And I certainly think that's true. I don't, I think the commandments are obviously the law and, and, and meant to be obeyed. But I think even if we didn't have them, we would know what right and wrong is. It's written on our heart. Well, I don't, dis, I don't know that I disagree with you, uh, but I, but I believe that the Lord would not have put so much strong emphasis on teaching uh, and getting the information into the brain if he thought that having it on the heart was the answer. Um, I realize that there's coming a time when it will be on our heart and it will be in control. Well, I believe it's in our hearts today, but I don't think it's in control of our hearts. And I think that's because we don't have it in the mind. And we, yeah, and so 
Um, I, I, use a, I use an illustration that's in this book. It's in almost every book I've written. I have three circles, a big circle, a smaller circle, and a small circle. And the biggest circle represents the body and all of its activity. The second one is soul, which has to do with the mind and the will and the emotions. And then the third one is the spirit, which has to do with the communication. Sin, yeah, and it, what, temptation comes through the body, through the flesh, to the soul. And if the will is not built or there is no strength from the spirit to resist it, then it's going to allow that person to sin. Well, I think that we have the, the spirit with the law, but the mind doesn't have the law. And so we have a link that's missing. And so many people will be led to yield to the temptation rather than to resist it. That's a really good way to, to, to lay that out, uh, Dr. Ramsey. Uh, I, I, ha I have another pastor I work with, uh, Dr. Preston Bailey, and he, he said the exact same thing, that the outer court, inner court, and holy of holies, the midground. Oh, wow. The midground of the soul, he says, is mind, will, and emotion, like you just stated. Yeah. Um, yeah. I always wonder, though, where consciousness fits in. Is that part of the mind? No, no. consciousness is in the spirit. Okay, good, good. That's why, that's why if, and, and I hate to use, I don't know if I should use this illustration or not, but we see it often. That's why you can see uh, someone who is not a covenant person, it doesn't matter what color they are, um, who can be loving and friendly, and uh, they can be everything they seem to ought to be, and uh, yet in the heat of an argument with them with their most loved spouse, they can pull out a knife and cut their throat. Is because they don't have that spiritual resistance to the flesh. And so when 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 our children marry outside of our covenant people, they're literally putting their lives at risk. Is that the unpardonable sin? No. Well, you mean um, race fixing? Well, wow. I think I think it I think it certainly is a, a an unforgivable sin uh, to the person who's involved. But I think there may have been when uh, John wrote about that. I think there was some there may have been some other things involved. Uh, I've never been able to pinpoint, but I think you're close. I think that's I think certainly that is one. How can you unscramble a race, you know, a racial mixture? You can't do it. And uh, if you get if you get someone who is a covenant person with the Spirit of God and they're married with someone who's not a covenant person and can't have the Spirit of God and they produce a child, what have you got? You've got at least you, you've at least got a, a twisted or deformed spirit. You don't have... Or a, or a double-minded man is unstable in all the ways. Yes, that's possible. Yes, very good. Oh, that's great. Well, I uh, I have to sit here and tell you that I'm optimistic. I've seen more growth in the kingdom message uh, in the last two or three years uh, than I've ever seen. But at the same time, I've also seen more growth in the wickedness in the world. So it's it's a race to the end, I think, is where we are. And I, th I, I think we're living in Genesis 20. Uh, verse 3 through 7 where it says and, and uh, the devil actually goes out and gets the enemy to surround the holy city and we're the holy city we're the people of the new Jerusalem uh, the new Jerusalem is not the old Jerusalem and I think that the nations of the world that hate God and hate his people and hate the word of God I believe they're, they're in the place where they believe that they either have to do it now or never and so they're making a last ditch effort to put a, a noose around us. And uh, I say that because even in our country, in our Washington, D.C., I knew that you're there, so I don't know where you work there, but they introduced a bill uh, that got passed in Germany, got passed in Europe, uh, but the bill says that any criticism of a Jew can be a felony. Really? Yes. That's on the floor. That's that's in in uh, in that's already written and in the legislature in Washington really? D.C. Unbelievable. Yes. So the old uh, any idea uh, years ago, I had a run in with the IRS and in a court hearing, I I said, well, I thought we had freedom of religion, and the IRS agent looked at me and said, not about taxes, you don't. 
<laughs> so well, they've been uh, trying to do, they've been trying to squelch our right to object for ever, and they're they're getting they're getting very uh, effective at causing it. Most most Christians are not even willing to have a little bad publicity, let alone suffer any real harm. And that's that's one of our weaknesses. We just don't have. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, a mother and two children being thrown into the lion's den and she's just standing there praying and lets the lions eat her, you know. But, and she had a chance. She could have said, well, I'll bow to the Romans or I'll bow to the Roman God, but they didn't. But I don't know. I think our people would bow today, a lot of them. What happened to her rapture? Now, I'm not a rapture proponent at all. I'm, I'm not either. <laughs> I don't know. Um, everything I know about the rapture, it's the wicked that's going to get raptured, not the righteous. But uh, right but, there, uh, there is one one uh, uh, scripture that says, "Pray that ye be counted worthy to escape these things." So that kind of sounds like some some benefit. Well, I think that uh, I'm I'm a very firm believer that if the judgment comes on our nation. Those who uh, serve the Lord and obey the Lord and are not in the key places where the Lord needs a witness are probably going to escape. I think they will escape. Uh, uh, but I think the I think the nominal churches and most of their members are I think they'll be wiped out. Yeah, and I think that's coming in the not too distant future. Like you oh, said, the enemy yeah. is up against a wall at the moment. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I know uh, President Trump is not perfect. He's certainly not a saint in terms we speak of. Um, but at least God has, has used him to bring forth uh, to the people things that they have never seen before. And uh, I don't know as to what the play out will be on that. I don't know if he's going to be able to uh, help deliver us. Uh, I doubt it. Um, I don't look to him as being a savior. I don't look to him as being... Uh, God in the flesh, um, but I think God has given us, God gave us a president that really did us in, and now he's given us one that's not do, do, doing it so badly, and I think the people have to choose, and I think the next time around, we're going to find out. Yeah, I, I'm not really political, but I do understand. I think, you know, I, I go to the math and, and I'm more of a scientist. So when the scripture says in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, it didn't say trumpet. It said trump. Yes, you, yes, it means trumpet. I understand that. But I think that was intentional. And this may be the last President Trump. I think it could could apply to that. Just speculation. Uh, sounds good. <laughs> sounds better than the joke they used to tell about the burning bush. <laughs> Right. And I also I also believe that God is using President Trump, if for nothing else, to expose the evil. If you recall, was it in Ezekiel where it said, uh, let me show you what's going on here behind the wall or down underground. And and I believe President Trump is being used to let let me show you what's going on behind the curtain here. Well, certainly in the exposure of the pedophilia and the uh, adultery and fornication and and all of that, uh, Lying, that is, stealing all of that. Right. I mean, uh, <clears throat> when when they finally realize, you know, it's, it's come out, so many things have come out. I don't want to get into a political side here, but so many things have come out that would not have come out under anybody else. I think you're right about that. Right. So when we do get judged, we will have no excuse because we'll have seen right. what, what we inadvertently, because we have not been praying and not been humbling ourselves before God. That's the real right. problem. Uh, and because yeah. of that, we have no excuse. He shows us what evil has done because we have not been praying. One of the things that, uh, that I use an example, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe it's not a good example. But, you know, in the Roman Empire, when the new church, early church, uh, it was the Romans who were not Christians who went and cheered as the lions were turned loose on the Christians. Um, today, we don't have lions and we don't have that kind of a thing, but you got this sport, sports affiliate, the in, in, in NFL, and so, and, and so much of their entertainment is so ungodly and so uh, blatantly uh, lewd. And yet, and, and uh, they won't even uh, honor our country and our flag. And, and we can't even get Christians to stand at home and turn their TVs off and watch something else 
to put that kind of thing out of business. We, we our people want to go out there and cheer with the with the the other crowd, and and to me that's just a blatant example of why Christians are in the trouble we're in. We we just we're willing to we're not willing to take a stand against the world is. Yeah, there, our yeah. minds have been uh, uh, deadened or put a veil on our minds through a long agenda of desensitization. You know, slowly, gradually bringing in these sins. That it takes a real discernment and a real dedication to the scriptures again and prayer to pull yourself out of that quicksand. Because, you know, in Revelation, as you know, Pastor, it says, to them that are righteous, let them be righteous still. And to them that are uh, evil, they shall continue to be evil still because you get deeper and deeper where you can't get out. Well, that, that's what the Lord, what the angel said to uh, Daniel. It says, in the end time, that's exactly right. It, it, the, the people would become more evil and the righteous would become more righteous. And I think that's exactly where we're at. Well, I, yeah, I'd yeah, i be glad to answer any questions. I've given you about everything I know <laughs> and uh, uh, what I see. And I trust the Lord will uh, enrich, uh, richly bless you and expand your kind and, and give you a great future uh, on, on the web or wherever. And I uh, hope that uh, uh, people will want to come to the conference or read the books or go to my website or look at the material uh, whenever it's possible and uh, see what we're doing for the Lord. Thank you very much, Paul, for having me on today. Today, Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ramsey, Pastor Ramsey. I appreciate it. And this is quite a, a edifying discussion and teaching today. And I do also encourage everybody to uh, check out uh, Pastor Ramsey's book. I, I certainly am. And as well as consider uh, either going to the conference or, or finding a way to watch it afterwards. So thank you, Dr. Ramsey, and, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Uh, by the way, Paul, I was just pulling this up for him. Uh, here's on his uh, website, he's got last year's conference videos, which are also on his YouTube channel. He's also got a bunch of, uh, well, CD tracks, and uh, maybe there's some MP3s here, I'm not sure. Yeah, MP3s, you notice these are in MP3s. In fact, most, it looks like all these are MP3s, I guess. So these could be pulled down and be put on a uh, drive and, uh, you know, played in your car. Now, I, I mentioned that last uh, channel, if you recall, I mentioned that uh, I would do a video for us and uh, show people how to download files off the web. And here it is. Uh, use a thumb drive on your HD TV to watch videos, MP3 audio, or you can view uh, charts. So you can look at JPGs or, you know, images, in other words. So I did a, uh, just posted this the other day. So people want to see uh, how to use a thumb drive on their TV to watch video. Makes it real nice because you can just uh, carry around hundreds, basically hundreds of hours of high def video in MP4, for example, on a thumb drive for 20 bucks. So a lot better than carrying around a bunch of uh, DVDs, which are not even high def, you see. And yeah, here, yeah, so if they want to uh, look at that, if they're not already familiar, a lot, a lot of people are not familiar. Here's a schedule. Now, he didn't really say, uh, it's just here in Branson, uh, I'm not going to really uh, put that out exactly where it's going to be at, but you're going to have to either call him or get on his website, as he said, and at the bottom of his website, he has a contact us, and then uh, get signed up, and they have a hotel here, uh, does it say that about the hotel in here? I guess not. Not on there. It doesn't mention it on here, but he can send you a... Uh, an email once you contact them through the website and then uh, that'll give you a little bit more information about it. You just kind of need to sign up ahead of time. They, the hotel rooms, I think, are what, 60 bucks? Yeah. Yeah, $60 is a really nice place. So $60 is a very low price for that uh, place that it's at uh, and they'll have a big conference room and there will hopefully be a few hundred people there. Yeah, that looks really good. I, I did get to see the DVDs last year and they were very... Uh edifying. I, I certainly uh, got a lot out of them. And this will be uh, in a different location uh, with more space and so forth. So we'll have, a, and those will be up here when we get done. And also, uh, like I said, he, so he's got a AV, this is his AV page, audio video that we're looking at at the moment. And then, so he's got all these MP3s here, which you can listen to in, in your car. If you have something less than about 10 years old, they generally have a uh, USB uh, plug in your radio 
where you can plug in and listen to mp3s and then his his uh, guy made a racial choice you just go to amazon type that in that's all i did it came right up uh basically 19 dollars in paperback and it's 300 and i think it said 360 382 pages and that just became available a few days ago yeah i'm gonna figure out a way to get that i'll send you one <laughs> thank you all right so uh anything else we need we don't really need to cover uh anything else for us tonight this is uh you know everything we need to talk about yeah i certainly appreciate david you bringing dr ramsey on and uh it was really enjoyable for me to meet pastor ramsey and i know yeah. you've talked highly of him quite often and it must be nice to have somebody like that you can fellowship in person so you guys are very blessed in that regard yes, yes we are well there's just uh, only so many people that are uh, spending time uh, trying to get the truth out and first of all like you know we uh, kind of hit our own thing and we'll get back to it on uh, video eight <laughs> so yeah, appreciate we'll you having us on we'll pick, we'll pick a certain time every, every month and yeah. then more if we can great well thanks for having us on and uh, i think that turned out real good i hope we're sound all that's good yeah okay um you want to lead us out in prayer uh david uh how about i'll let dr ramsey do that all right father thank you for being our god thank you for choosing us we're not worthy of your love or your redemption. And so we are grateful that you would lean down and choose us and bring us to righteousness. Help us to live in righteousness. Help us to obey you and love you. And Father, thank you for these two men and all the others who are trying to get the truth out. We pray that you would anoint them, protect them, and provide for their needs. Now, Father, go with us. Give us rest tonight. Help us to be invigorated to work more tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.